makeup has helped this situation 0%. Good job, Leanne. Been at least a gar Christmas jumper? I don't know. That's, that's shallow compensation for lack of videos, really. Jingle bells, jingle bells. Okay, I'll stop. Hi guys, it's Leanne. And as you can tell from my voice, I am sick. I have been sick for just over a week now. And it can quit. Any time it likes, any time, any time. I'm done now. So not only do I sound kind of like a leprechaun that was laid off for not being cheery enough, but it also means that I'm very behind getting this TBR up, so I do apologise. You guys will probably notice that at the end of October I kind of went poof, and that was because I was doing lots of Halloween stuff and we had family up for a week and then my tripod broke and it was just, it's just a lot of sad things. It was a lot of sad things and I, let's just move on with our lives, shall we? So this month I have decided that I am going to go easy on myself for my stack at TBR. So I've still made a stack. There is still a stack of books that I need to get through. But I'm going to be a little bit less rigid about what order I read those books in just for this month because I feel like trash and I have got piles of craft stuff that are getting bigger than me that I need to have done for the start of December to give out as gifts. So, let's just talk about the book, shall we? Let's, let's do that. Let's do that. <coughs> and let's try and not die while we do it. Mm -hmm. If any of you have been following my Goodreads, you will probably know that the first on my list for Stack It are The Witch's Books by Terry Pratchett. October always means Terry Pratchett for me. It always means returning to the Discworld. It's really comforting fantasy. And as usually happens, I have fallen down the rabbit hole. So I have decided that I am going to reread the whole series and I'm going to start with the witches books. Last month I read Equal Rights, Weird Sisters and Witches Abroad. And at the start of this month I read Lords and Ladies and now I am reading Masquerade and I will go on to finish with Carpe Jugulum. Then I'm going to go on to the Tiffany Aching books. These books are part of the reason why I'm not making an order for my stack it because I'm listening to them on audiobook this time around which is perfect for when I'm crafting with clay covered and paint covered fingers because I, I can't I can't do anything else so I get to just listen to Nigel Planer doing Granny Weatherwax which is just because it's the 8th of the month, the next thing on my TBR was a carryover from last month and it was The Sleep of Reason by David James Smith, which is a book, kind of the definitive book really, about the James Bulger case. James Bulger was a two-year-old boy who was abducted in the 90s from a shopping centre by two 10-year-old boys and was pretty brutally murdered and it follows the case from the start and then it goes back and gives you a lot of details about the two assailants and about James's family and the reaction of the community and the police force and things. It's a very good true crime book especially if you don't know a lot about this case. I knew quite a lot about it going in so I was expecting a lot but I think it would be really super shocking if you weren't. At least Stack It is kind of working even though I'm breaking my own rules because I'm ill. The next book on my list is a bit of a classic and it is Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton. I can't believe that I haven't read this book before. It's absolute sacrilege. I am a devotee of these movies. Like, I don't care how absurd they are. I, j I love them. I love them. So when I picked this up, I had really high expectations, especially after The Wonderful Kirsty told me that it is quite different from the movie version, and it is so far very different from the movie version, but not in a bad way. It still very much gives you the same feels that at least the movie version have been quite close to the characters, or at least the main players' personalities, and so it's great. We've just got to the island, they've just revealed that they're cloning dinosaurs, so yeah, it's fabulous. After I finish this one, I will be going on to read The Lost World, which is of course the sequel to Jurassic Park. Next up on my list is a little bit of middle grade fantasy fun. 
I have been resisting reading this one since it came out because so many people are talking about it and you know what that does for me. My hype train just stalls in the station and refuses to go any further. But I have finally kind of got over myself on this one because I want to read it in the magical season which is November. I don't know about you guys but in November I quite like to get myself in the festive spirit with things like penguin jumpers and also I do all of my Christmas card writing in November in a very chill way with candles on. It's a nice prep period and I like to read middle grade and like really whimsical fantasy stuff so I'm going to be picking up Nevermore The Trials of Morrigan Crow which is book one. The reason I say it's book one is because book two, Wondersmith, has just come out and it may or may not be sitting in hardback in front of me on my desk because I know I'm gonna love this one. I know I'm gonna love it. So this one is about Morrigan Crow. She is destined to die on I think it's her 11th birthday and she is not going to be mourned because her family and the townspeople all believe that she is the reason that all of the bad things happen in their town and they're quite happy to throw her a funeral, I mean a party, I mean a funeral. But then out of nowhere a guy called Jupiter North turns up and spirits her away right before she is due to and he tells her that she has the opportunity to join the Wondrous Society but in order to do that and escape her life she will have to complete many trials. Of course this is giving me like Goblet of Fire vibes. I hope it's better than Goblet of Fire. It's possibly my least favourite in the Harry Potter series. Go throw stones somewhere else because don't throw them at me or I'll breathe on you. I'm very Jeremy right now. The next two books that I'm going to be reading I mentioned in a video last month where I wanted to read six of the oldest books that were on my TBR. So after I did a massive cull off my shelves I kind of took stock of what I had for the longest period and I've made a great big long list. And so these were the first six books that I picked off of it. And the first one that I'm going to read is this one. This is The Good Girl by Fiona Neal and it's about the Fiona family who have kind of unceremoniously and rather quickly moved to a new town. The mother has taken a new job at a high school where she is the headmistress and her young daughter Romy has got herself very quickly into a situation that she would never normally find herself in. She's normally the good girl and in this case mm, she's really kind of not. So Romy and her mother decide to cover up this situation and bad things happen because lies are bad most of the time. Come on, you knew my channel was a moral grey area a long time ago. <laughs> I read far too much true crime. And again the next book is also off of that older TBR and it is A Stolen Life by JC Degard. JC was abducted as a very young girl from her school, like she got off the school bus, she was in view of her house and she was abducted and it was like 16 years later or something like that that she was discovered living in a tent with her children in the back of her abductor's house. Um, it's a very twisty complicated true crime memoir. Um, as I said in my video which I'll link up here in case you haven't seen it, one of the criticisms that's levelled at this one quite a lot is that the writing is not very good but there's no ghostwriter for this one and JC is not a writer, she's somebody who has experienced a trauma and is trying to tell you about it in her own words so I'm not I'm not gonna necessarily dock too many points off it for that, you know what I'm saying. The next book on my list I'm actually super salty about is the seventh or I think I'm gonna say it's the seventh book in the Rivers of London series and it is Lies Sleeping by Ben Aronovich. I say I think it's the seventh because there was a novella but I guess that would be like 6.5, I don't know, whatever. It's the seventh full length novel in the series and it was meant to come out mid-October but it was pushed back to mid-November which um, I'm, I mean I should probably just be happy that I'm getting another full length novel in this series this year but I'm not inclined right now 
to be grateful uh, so I'm just gonna stay solely. I can't really tell you very much about this particular novel but in case you haven't heard of the Rivers of London series and I just don't know why it is not more popular on booktube because I absolutely love it. It is about PC Peter Grant who is re has reached the point in his career where he has to choose what division he wants to kind of specialise in. He works in London for the Met and he is not sure what he wants to do and then he is guarding a crime scene where a murder has happened somebody's there's a dead body anyhow he's he's looking after the crime scene and some random person turns up and he's like you shouldn't be here and proceeds to take a statement from him and it turns out that that person that he took the statement from is a ghost and he is catapulted into a whole world of magic that he did not know existed. It's kind of like adult Harry Potter meets urban fantasy meets procedural and I think it's great. I think it's great. Next I am going to read The Hollow Boy. The Hollow Boy is the third in the Lockwood & Co series. It's right in front of me. I should stop being lazy. I was, I was gonna put it on the screen but I'll just, I'll, it's alright. I'll dig it out for you guys because I'm nice. Because I love you and stuff. So here it is. Here it is. As you can see there's a bookmark in it because I did actually start it in October but then I decided I didn't have the brain power and so um I need to I need, I need to read it this month because I need to I want to finish this series I don't want to finish this series because then it'll be done but I, I want to finish this series because I freaking love it this is about ghost hunting teens in a questionable time period in London where ghosts have reappeared and um, there have been agencies set up run exclusively by adults because the only people who can see the ghosts are people below the age of kind of 18 and so they're employed by the adults to do the horrible dangerous work but this is about Lockwood & Co which is a little ragtag agency of three teens who want to you know make money and not be ruled by adults and it's just it's great it's great it's super creepy for an upper YA series I just I love it I love it. And then at some point this month I am going to finish listening to Nemesis by Agatha Christie. This is the, I don't know, <laughs> I think it's the 11th, the 11th of 13. I think it's the 11th of 13 of the Miss Marple novels. I don't have big brain power right now, I'm sorry. But um, I don't want this series to finish either and there's a big completionist part of me that wants to finish it before the year is out because then I can be like yeah I finished this seat but I don't want to be out of new Miss Marple novels to read. I love her. I love this series. <sighs> it's just sad. It's very sad. Anyhow this series is narrated on audiobook by the amazing Joan Hickson and I'm going to be doing a video very shortly well when I get my voice back properly about audiobooks that I love and narrators that I love and this series will definitely be on there. This one's annoyed me a little bit already. It's I'm really enjoying it because the actual plot in Marple is great and it's, it's centered on Marple and St Mary Mead at home again and again because as I've said a hundred times there's an internal chronology in Marple books and she gets older as the series progresses by this point she's very very frail and almost incapable of doing investigative work herself but the reason that I'm annoyed is because I have only DNF'd one out of all of the Marple novels and it was a Caribbean mystery and this brings back a character who was in that. So anyhow, in this one, a person who Miss Marple met in a Caribbean mystery has died and has left her quite a big fortune and at her time of life what she thinks is that that amount of money really means being able to help the people that she cares about. But there's a catch. In order to get the money she has to solve a mystery but he hasn't given her any details of what that mystery might be and so the mystery is a mystery and it's very good. It's it's very good. I am enjoying it. It's one of the longer Marple novels which makes me happy. So watch this space. I may read this one and then the other two this month as well because I want to complete the series or I might not. I don't know. I don't know. Tell me. Tell me what you think I should do. I don't want there to be no Marple novels left. <laughs>
I am sick and that sounds like the worst thing ever. I'm not going to try and hold up my stack because that's too much effort. But those are all of the books on my stack at TBR for November. As I say, I'm going to be a bit gentle on myself and just let myself read all of those books in whatever order I want. But you know, I, just, I have to read those books because that's what's in my stack. You know the rules. You know the rules. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed this slightly belated video. I'm sorry that it is slightly belated. Um, I also will note that I am not participating in hashtag nonfiction November because I don't have the brain power for it this month. But I fully support the wonderful Olive and um, all of her reading ventures. So I will leave the announcement post in the description below for that one because I'm really enthusiastic about it and I'm kind of sad but I'm not, I, I can't, I can't guys, I can't. I can only read fiction this month. I can only read about made up people. So as always, if you have read any of the books that I've mentioned or if you think that you might pick up any of the books because of me groggily talking about them then please let me know and we can chat in the comments and until next time please enjoy your reading and please hope that I get better and I'll speak to you soon. Bye! Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle. <laughs> I need more tea.